Hello everyone. My name is Sagar Pathak and in this video, I'm going to explain to you how to uh, go ahead with the APS form. Uh, I'm sure most of you who are watching this video already are aware of APS. So APS um, is, uh, it stands for Akademische Proofsteller. It is verification process initiated by the German government and for all the students who are going to pursue their bachelor's degree or master's degree in Germany would need this additional document from last year. So it has been made mandatory. So basically the APS center is set up in Delhi and they are going to um, verify all the academic records which we will send them by post. Uh, so they will communicate with the concerned university or board and they will verify those documents and you will be issued a certificated PDF form which will be sent to your email. So that certificate uh, costs 18,000 rupees and this certificate is a mandatory document when we'll uh, go through the application process, when we'll apply to the universities. Uh, very important thing is that you must be aware of this also that waiting period for APS is very uh, long. Uh, right now it is taking around three to four months um, for getting the certificate. So you're recommended to apply as soon as possible. So ideally this should be the moment you have decided that Germany is your destination uh, for your higher studies, higher education, you should first uh, apply for APS. So uh, the process is very simple and I'm sure uh, most of you would be able to do it anyway. Uh, people keep on coming to us asking doubts and problems. It, it is just that they are skeptical. They don't want to make a mistake. So they are cautious. And that's why uh, I thought I'll, we'll create, create this video. So we, in this video, I'll uh, help you understand with the help of step-by-step -step process. Yeah. Um, how it goes. And um, let us get started then. Yeah. So Epic APS application process explained step-by-step. -step. First step. Before you start, what exactly you need? Number one, you should have your Aadhaar card uh, number ready with you and your mobile number should be linked to Aadhaar card. Okay, linking of mobile number is not a prerequisite for filling this form, but it is required. I'll tell you how it will help you later, but um, you can fill in the form now and maybe if your no mobile number is not linked, maybe get it get it done. Yeah, it will take hardly eight, ten, eight to 10 days, but it is important that your mobile number should be linked to your Aadhaar card. Uh, number two is your passport. You already have the passport ready, so there is no problem. Number three uh, is your list of like, all the documents. Your SSC onwards, all the documents should be there with you. Uh, while filling the form, you do not need soft copies. You do not have to upload anything. Uh, we will need to send the hard copies, zero photocopies of these documents via courier. So SSC, HSC, if you have done diploma, polytechnic, uh, that document plus degree certificate if you have done master's degree then that certificate also so we will need the year of passing and percentage and everything um, then we will need the test scores language proficiency tests you, for english you might have appeared for ielts or toefl their score scorecard is required uh, if you need uh, if you have appeared for german language tests goethe institute a1 a2 and so on so that test score however test score to scores are not mandatory so they are optional. Uh, if you do not have any test score, you can still apply for APS certificate. Um, anyway, there is no prerequisite as such. So even the people who have not completed their degree and they have got a transcript for seventh semester also in engineering case, they can also apply uh, for APS. However, is that, that the problem is that we cannot update the APS form later. For instance, if I appear, I pay 18,000 rupees, I send the form to them. They will verify the documents, whichever I have sent them. And after few months, when I have my degree, I can't just update it in the certificate. Yeah, so uh, maybe if your university is ready to consider um, only seven semesters, then you can go ahead with the AP certificate. Okay, so um, last thing is about the fees, which is 18,000 rupees as of now. There are two ways of paying the, this fee. First thing is that at the end of the form, there will be a button pay now, You can, which will redirect you to a payment gateway. There you can pay by using your debit card, credit card or UPI. Uh, so it's convenient. However, a lot of our students have got uh, have faced same problem that the payment gets rejected or payment failure is there and so on. So in that case, it is still doable. It is not the end of the world. Of course, we can find a solution to that. There are a lot of threads on the website itself that what you should do when the payment gets failed. Uh, but then there is a second alternative, which I personally prefer that uh, instead of making an online payment, you can also do this, that 18,000 rupees can be transferred to their bank account. Uh, APS, uh, APS bank account details are already 
given on their website. So their bank name, uh, account number, and IFSC code, and so on. So you can just log into your mobile banking device, the mo mobile banking or internet banking, or if you want, you can just walk into the branch and give these details and transfer the money, eighteen thousand rupees, to their bank account. So that will be the easiest way, and you will have the receipt immediately. After you have the receipt, you can fill in the form. So that is what I'm going to do in this uh, demo. So here I have already, we have, we are using data of our, one of our students and he has already transferred 18,000 rupees to the bank account, uh, their bank account. And now, uh, when it comes to filling the form, we'll get started. Okay. Step number one is this is the home page. You go to the rightmost column, which is login and uh, sorry, apply. You start click on apply and then you have to create an account. Yeah. So when you create an account, you select a username, use your email ID cannot be your username. So it could be Sagar123 or whatever you want, username. Then you have to select the password. You have to repeat the password. Uh, remember the password, user ID and password. When you select and successfully complete the process, you will get an email from them also. And in the email, your username and password will be mentioned. Uh, still, it is better that you take a note of it. Uh, once you have uh, filled these details in, you go to the next step and then you land on to the second page, which is personal details. So here you need to um, fill in personal details. You need a soft copy of your passport size photo. Yeah, your photo should be less than 30 KB size. So if your photo is larger uh, image, like uh, you have to compress it beforehand. Uh, as you can see here, I have, you select the choose file, you select the file, you upload it. Uh, compressed version will be uploaded. If the size is okay, uh, there will be no message, no error message. If there is an error message, it will appear in the red uh, color here. Uh, here you can see there is no red color message. That means it is accepted. Then you fill it in your details. You write your first name. I recommend that your first name should be written as per your passport. Yeah, the way it is written on passport. In most of the cases, uh, in India, for instance, students' first name and middle name is written as first name and last name will use your surname so check your passport and fill accordingly write your email address you have to re-enter your email address here select your gender and your nationality uh there are some more things you have to write for example date of birth you have to write uh place of birth is also printed on the passport write exactly the way it is written in the passport if it says kalyan maharashtra write kalyan maharashtra uh are you indian citizen select the answer put in your Aadhaar card here yeah, your other card number needs to be put in here. Then your passport number needs to be put in here. Yeah, passport number is printed on the passport. Your contact number, mobile number. This is very important. It is um, people working there, they do contact us some, in some cases. So we should be accessible on phone. This is your number. If you want, you can give an alternative contact number also. The person who knows and understands what to answer when the person, uh, when he or she gets called from APS. So alternate contact number, then your address. Nowadays, address is just a formality because in, uh, initially they used to send AP certificates via post, but now they are going to send by email. So write the address. If your residential address is different than permanent address, it, it won't really make any difference here. So it write your address. And then last thing is your zip code, everything. Once you have filled the details, you can click on the next. So this is how. Uh, personal uh, information section is over. You click on the next button. Then we go to the third part, which is the educational details. Now here we have to fill in 10th onwards. So select the name of the board. Um, we have to make sure whatever name of the board, the other details are printed on the mark sheet and the passing certificate that is required. Yeah, that should be written. So if it is an SSC board, I would prefer not to write I I SSC. I would write the entire name of the board, which is in the student's case, uh, Maharashtra State Board of Techni uh, Secondary and Higher Secondary Education. So if it is a center CBSC or ICSC, then full form should be written. Uh, your year passing year, the center number is always printed on the certificate or passing certificate. Yeah, the center number needs to be mentioned. The percentage that you got here, uh, the percentage may be printed directly. Most In most of the cases, percentage is already printed uh, on the certificate. Then comes to 12th details also. Similarly, you do the same thing. 12th board, uh, year of passing, center number, and uh, 12th percentage. So once this is, if anything is not applicable, you can keep it blank. Yeah, As you can see, 10th, everybody has to do. So it is a, a mandatory field here. Every, everywhere you can see red star marks. But um, wherever there is no red star mark, that means it's an optional field. So if you don't have the information, you can just keep it blank. It is not necessary that everything has to be filled in. If you do not know the center number, for example, you cannot find it, it you can skip it. 
not advisable, but it works. Yeah. Um, some people might not have done 12th and they might have done diploma. That's why 12th uh, details are not star mark. Uh, if you have done 12th, you can write the details. If you have also appeared for JE examination and if you have your score here, uh, this is more of for bachelor students. So they can write uh, JE score and JE advanced score if they have. Uh, then next part is the diploma, if applicable. So if you have done a diploma, you can fill it the details. Here you can see diploma student login ID and diploma student password. In certain cases, this will come to the degree also. Okay, I'll explain to that in the, on the next page then. I'll go to the next slide. When you go for bachelor's education details, uh, you have to select the option still studying in bachelor's or completed bachelor's. So our student has completed bachelor's, so I've selected this. And the name of the university, we'll write the name of the college or the institution as it is printed on the mark sheet, it should be written. Name of your degree will be Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Technology or Bachelor of Engineering, uh, whatever, Bachelor of Commerce, Business Administration, so on. And years, duration, your degree generally could be of three years or four years. Your specialization could be chemistry, biotechnology, computer science, uh, financial, financial management and so on, whatever. Year of passing, when in which year did you pass bachelor's degree? The percentage. Now here we have got options of bachelor's percentage and bachelor's CGPA. Now uh, APS certificate, APS website does not specify anything here, but uh, to my understanding, I tell you what I understand is that the, if your mark sheet has percentage printed on it, you should write percentage. If your mark sheet has a GPA, that is CGPA, cumulative GPA, printed on it, you should write CGPA. You, should, you need not convert percentage into CGPA and don't fill it both the um, spaces here, so both the blanks. So either you have, if you have a percentage, you write percentage. If you have ready-made CGPA, then ignore percentage, write CGPA. If your university has a portal access, so some universities also have a portal access. University of Mumbai does not have it. University of Pune does not have it, for example, but some private universities especially have student logins. So uh, if that is there, you should write your uh, student login uh, email ID or login ID password so that APS department just, for example, uh, log tries to log in to your portal using your credentials and they can see the degree details are there. So it is in a way verification. So you, whatever you have written is true that you this, this student uh, can prove agar uski pass hota, if had he had the details, uh, the APS department could uh, check if the student has completed this degree from this particular university. Uh, if it is not available, you can keep it blank. Uh, ideally, you should also give reference to one of the professors. So you should talk to one of the teachers beforehand, uh, the person from your college who is working right now in the college, any person, any teacher, it could be your principal or head, head of the department or other teachers who could verify that these uh, academic details are correct. So APS department will contact them via email. And in, in that case, they should be prompt enough. They should read the email, check emails timely and uh, reply. So uh, this, uh, their, their email ID should be written. Uh, once this is done, this goes to the master's uh, details, if applicable, if you have a master's degree, again, you have to fill it in the details. Similar de details are there. So I'll skip to the next part. If you have then another additional degree diploma, then these details are required and then you go to the next one. So this way we are done with the educational details one and two. Uh, here comes now test score, test details. So if you have written test AS, which is a mandatory examination for bachelors, then you should write there that the details. Uh, if you do not have the test AS details as of now, you need not fill in. If for bachelors or for master students, it is not applicable anyway. So we'll go to the next part. Language details. The, this field is also optional. Yeah, so you need not, uh, it is not a mandatory field. If you have the IELTS scorecard and so on, you can fill it in. If you do not have the details, let it be. Uh, if your language of medium of instruction in Germany is going to be English, then IELTS is, is must. Yeah, so German may or may not be required. If your medium of instruction is German, then German language certificate is must. If your medium of instruction is both, that some courses are taught in German and some courses are taught in English, then you will need both certificates. So here, when you uh, still click on the drop down menu, you have an option of selecting either German or English or German and English. And accordingly, you can fill it in the details. If you have the test scores, then you have to fill it in.
you have to write the total score. Uh, in, in case of IELTS, you have to write the band. And in case of Goethe Institute, then the certificate has the score that has to be written. After that, we go to the last uh, page, where, which is the payment page. On payment page, as I told you, I'm going to select the option of paying offline. Right. So uh, because I have already our student has already made the NEFT transfer, uh, we will write the select the option of offline payment. Uh, first name of the pair, that means from whose account money has been transferred. If it is your own account and your name, if it is your father's account and your father's name and so on. Uh, the IFSC code of obviously your account. Yeah. So uh, we do not have to fill it in the details of IF, IFSC code of uh, APS. They already know their details so we they want to know from which bank which branch you have selected uh, made the payment so that ifsc code must be printed on your checkbook or your passbook uh, passbook so you can copy the copy it down from there amount has to be then eighteen thousand rupees uh the date of payment on which you have made the payment the name of the bank your bank and the transaction reference number which is also called as utr so it is a uh, utr number is printed on the slip after uh your successful transaction so the page which comes up if you have missed that, you can contact your branch. Your branch should be able to give you UTR. And here you have to select the option of pay offline if you have made the NFT transfer. If you do not want to make the NFT transfer and you have decided to go with the online payment, you have to select the CC Avenue option and then you submit the form. Yeah, once you have submitted the form, uh, in case of offline payment, in my student's case, it was done. So he immediately got, got emails from uh, APS saying that account has been created. It will be manually uh, activated after some time and your login details again and so on. So this is how it goes. Uh, second part goes to the courier. Once we are done filling in the online form, last step remains is sending the courier to them. So this is their address, which is also available on their website. Uh, we have to make sure that you take a long, uh, a big envelope where the papers will not be fold, folded. And on the envelope, you have to write their address. Uh, at the top, you should also mention your unique token number. Unique token number is printed on the form. Yeah, what exactly should be put in the envelope? I'll show you also. Um, but this is your address. Niche, you'll at the bottom, you'll write your uh, your address also. APS address, your address is written, and you can send it by a by a speed post or courier. You have to preserve the receipt so that you can track on which date did you send the documents and on which date did they receive the documents. So you'll have the proof and that needs to be preserved till you get the APA certificate. So this is it from uh, the presentation. And now I'll try to show you um, the website, what exactly needs to be sent. So what to put in the envelope? Step number one has to be the form, obviously. So the form which we have filled in, this form which we have manually filled in comes in one PDF. I'll tell you where to find it. Uh, you have to go to the APS website here. And in the APS website, you have to go click on the login. You have to put in the login details. This, this can be done after a few hours. Yeah. After you have activated the account, they have, they have activated your account. So it can be done next day, probably. Uh, then you have to go under inbox uh, here, uh, application download and the first one. Yeah. So our student did it on 2nd of, uh, February. So you have to click here and then download the form. Okay. So this is first thing, uh, ignore this, um, fifth of eleventh uh, or fifth message so the forms will be downloaded on the form you have to affix your passport size photo also uh you have to sign the form obviously and even if there is no space if there is no space you can sign it anywhere uh, at the end towards the end and uh, the form is ready after that you can go to the here requirements checklist option so this is very important second document when I, when I, you click on checklist this is the second document, which is mandatory document, which is must a student authorization letter. So you download this, you'll, uh, you'll get a PDF, print the PDF, fill in your details and sign there. So this authorization letter says that you give APS authority to check the details and process your document, additional information. Yeah. Um, after you are done the, the second thing form and then authorization letter. The third is the list of documents. Yeah. So I hear the checklist is also again given. So you can just accordingly, you can select it. Uh, the people who are up, up applying for graduation based on 12 standard, the ones who have JE mains and advanced. Uh, I, in my case, I, I, our student is going for master. So this is the checklist. I'll open this. 
and here you will find the list of documents yeah so accordingly all the documents need to be sent yeah they need, need not be uh, attested so you just have to get the photocopies well i think uh, that is it i'll just go through the list one so that there is no confusion um printed and duly signed application form which i showed you with passport size photo i told you uh, aps fee transfer uh, receipt so it could be nft challenge which you have gotten or it could be after successful online payment you will get the receipts so that receipt Aadhaar card you have to uh, take a print out of Aadhaar card and send them passport first and last page uh, 12th mark sheet and passing certificate then 12th admit card if available so in most of the case for bachelor students it may be available for masters it must not be available uh, copy of mark sheet of all semesters semester 1 to semester 6 or semester 8 if it is diploma then diploma and degree all the mark sheets uh, your degree certificate is also required. In case you have recently graduated, you may not have the degree certificate yet because convoc convocation will take time. So along with your last semester mark sheet, they also give you a provisional degree certificate. Yeah, provisional certificate. So that certificate also works. It is also called as passing certificate or provisional passing certificate, provisional degree certificate. So if it has been issued in less than one year, you can attach that also instead of degree certificate. If it has been more than a year, you have to apply for degree certificate first and then you can do the next process if transcripts are available then master's degree transcripts if available uh, if you want to attach language certificates then yes that and that is it so these these documents are to be read the instructions carefully and you can send it to them um, last tip from my side is uh, we recommend our students to get the uh, colored photocopies of all the documents from front and back so when you when I give my 12th mark sheet, for example, to the Xerox person, photocopy person, I ask him to get the color printout from both the sides, back to back, so that whatever is printed behind the certificate also comes. So it uh, tries to be try to give as much information as possible readily available to the people there APS. So it becomes the process becomes smooth and easy. Now, last question is that when do we get after doing this? When we have sent the courier, what is important? What is next? The only thing which you need to do is be patient. Rather, you can't do anything else. You have to be patient. So it does not matter. You There is no point. This is my personal advice to you. Don't get panic. Uh, don't overreact. Don't get hyper. Because you can't do anything. There is nothing that you can do. Once you have sent the documents, if uh, you are lucky, you are going to get the, the certificate in time. And if you get the certificate in time, you will be able to do it. But uh, it does not matter if you write many emails, uh, you try contacting people, it may not work. Yeah, So it is not uh, going to speed up your process or get the certificate or at least give you some uh, status where your documents are. We don't get any communication most of the times. In case you get a call, uh, they may ask you for your uh, verification, like professor's email ID, your mark uh, percentages. And last thing is that uh, if your mobile number is verified, uh, link to Aadhaar, uh, you should download the DigiLocker app. Yeah, and DigiLocker app is a government's official app for documents. And in DigiLocker, uh, you can download, search for your name of the board as um, state board 10th, 12th, and name of your university if it is already listed. If it is listed, download all the documents from DigiLocker app. So those documents are also verified documents. Many of our students also have experienced that the team members of APS ask them whether their mobile number is linked to Aadhaar card. If yes, then they would log in to the DigiLocker uh, and they would ask for OTP and then the students who share OTP and then they, they can check all the documents which are true, verified. So the copy matches and then the verification was done. So this is one of the ways, there are multiple ways. They send mails to um, professors and then they get the verification. So we do not know what exactly is going to happen in our case. What uh, an ideal case student should do is be prepared with everything, all the information so that the documents can be processed faster. Well, that is it from my side. I think I have tried to clear all the doubt doubts. Generally, the people questions which people have. Um, uh, in case if there is any question which I did not uh, incorporate in my video, you can ask in comments and we'll try to answer that or you can get back to contact us. Yeah, we'll help you. We'll be happy to help. All right, that is it from my side. I'll sign off from here and uh, I wish you all very, very best uh, that I wish you that you get the APS certificates very, very soon and then uh, you also be successful in your journey. 
in your destination Deutschland. Yeah, that, that's all from my side. Bye-bye.